Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Barry Fear with you signing on for a Wednesday, the 12th of September. I hope you've all had a good night and a good breakfast and a good sleep. Well, this is a very special edition with Gaia and Barry here now. Usually I am not up here on a Wednesday, but today, ladies and gentlemen, I've got a packed show for you. We'll be talking about safety on the beach, when to call triple zero in an emergency. We'll be doing a bit of a fish and chip review. We'll be talking about road safety and a bit of safety on the beach. So let's get into it now. And here's my offside and good morning. Good morning. Stay tuned for latest news from St. Ives. And now the first topic I'd like to bring up today is Sydney's weather. Well, it is going to be fine, warm, and partly cloud, cloudy today and 28 degrees while we're getting a bit of summer early and we're into the first month of spring already. Well, I can honestly tell you, you won't want to be out here for too long today, ladies and gentlemen. And what you need to have is a hat and some sunglasses and good quality sun cream, ladies and gentlemen. 50 plus sun cream is what you need. And when should you apply it? Before you go out, not after. So that's our advice to you here today. And another thing, with the sun cream, you've got to reapply it every two hours here after you've been to, to in the water. And our program today is sponsored by Nike. You can see the stripe on my upside of shoe here. Now, Nike are the brand that make those shoes. And, and speaking of shoes, you must wear closed-in shoes at work, but we are not talking about shoes today. We are talking about safety on the beach, and that is the next topic. Safety on the beach. Firstly, you must obey all the orders from the lifeguards if you are swimming and swimming between the red and yellow flags, ladies and gentlemen. And here's my offsider. Yeah, always um, listen to uh, the people that are there to guide you where is safe to swim and um, never swim out, swim outside the, the, the flags because that might be a dangerous currents and um, no one would look after you if you're outside the flags. So uh, be careful with the, with the strong, uh, strong waves. And, and never get go swimming if it is dangerous or the water is polluted, which I will get back onto in a moment. But if you go swimming when it's dangerous, this is disaster waiting to happen. And yeah, if you're in trouble, you raise your hand just like this 
and and I'll just give you another demonstration now. And but there you have it. That's how you raise your hand if you are in, in the water and and the lifeguards will come and rescue you. Before heading off to the beach, you must always listen to the radio weather updates for surfing and swimming and fishing conditions. You must never go fishing at night or swimming at night because it's really dangerous. And never stand on the edge of a rock if you are rock fishing because the rocks will be wet and you will slip and fall into the, the, the water. And that's how fatal drownings happen in some are here in Australia. So very important to be careful when you are rock fishing. And the, the other thing that my offsider and I would like to talk about today, and we'll touch a little bit on this now, is do not in their emergency services if they are attending to a patient on the beach because they may want to get the patient to hospital as quickly as they can. If a helicopter had been called in to assist with the patient, get off the beach as soon as possible so that the helicopter can land on the beach and the, the attending rescue helicopter like the Westpac Rescue and or Care Flight or the tow rescue helicopter like they've got now out of Bankstown can assist with the patient. On this next part of our show today, we're going to go outside the St. Ives Ambulance Station and I will tell you a little bit about how it works. Before we go to the next scene of today's show, I'd like to tell you how a triple O call to the ambulance is made. Firstly, you ring triple zero and a voice will ask what service you, do you require? Police, fire or ambulance? Or these days, the voice will say you have dialed emergency triple zero. So, if we were to call an ambulance here, we would still have to call triple zero. So our call could be recorded and that way triple one can track us down to see whether the call is hoped or it's real. So, so. When you are calling for an ambulance, you must be prepared to give your name, the injured person's name, the nature of the problem, and the exact address of the emergency, and give the nearest cross street and the landmark, the country or town where you need the ambulance to go to. If you are calling an ambulance at night from home, have front light on so that the paramedics know 
which house they are going into and always give the ambulance service the phone number that you are calling from. That way the ambulance service can call you back to obtain further information from you and, and stay calm when you are talking to triple zero operators because if you panic it will make the situation worse for, for yourself and it will make the situation very difficult for the call taker and you you must be polite to the call taker so that way he or she will be will be able to provide the best care for you over the phone and and the advice. Well coming up right now we're gonna take you to Sinai's ambulance station. Well not inside but outside the station and I will tell you what happened there. Well, well, here we are outside the St. Times Ambulance Station and this is the entrance here. When an ambulance is coming in, you can see the gate just, just here and the gate will open automatically so that the ambulance can drive in. Now you can see where the ambulance drives in. We can't take you inside the actual station, but we can tell you how this station works. When you call triple zero for an ambulance, you then tell the ambulance supervisor or call taker, as we call them here, or the, the dispatcher, whatever you want to call them. Uh, you tell them the exact address of the emergency, where, where the problem is taking place. Say, for example, over here, over here, then you need to give the ambulance the number, the phone number that you are calling from, so that that can they can bring you to get further information from you. The next question the ambulance supervisor will ask is. What's the problem? Tell me exactly what's happened. Why do you need an ambulance? It is very important to answer the court takers questions. Speak clearly and slowly and calmly. So, so uh, we can't take you inside to see the actual ambulance, but this is where the paramedics are based in this building here. So, 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 there, CDA stands for Central District Ambulance, which means this station covers the entire the Karengai Taft area, and many others. Now, if the ambulance station is busy and can't do the job, then the dispatcher will organize another crew from another station to 
attend to the emergency. So, so, we can't take you inside the building because the ambulance officers might not be able to hear us, but I can tell you what, what, what you need to do with this station is unattended. If you knock on the door, like go knock, 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 then the ambulance office won't be able to hear you because their rooms might be upstairs. There is a room downstairs and a room upstairs, so sort of like a home, really. So I hope I've explained very clearly about how ten times ambulance station station work. And after the break, I'll tell you a bit more about the hoax call. This is ten times ambulance station here, like I've mentioned. And this sign which you see on the on the building is called Central District Ambulance, the Karangai branch. Now as I've mentioned, this station covers the Karangai area and I think it would cover Warunga as well, but I'm not exactly sure of that. Back in the day, the ambulance service had Bedford ambulances where the paramedics just opened up a hatch and it, the ambulances used to take only one patient and the vehicles were column shift automatic and the reverse lights were orange and the sirens were just red. Now the ambulances had blue lights on them as well. We cannot show you what an ambulance is because they are tucked away inside the station and for another they might they might be a triple local coming through. So so as I've just said, this is the Central District Ambulance Karengai branch. So I hope you enjoyed this uh, segment about the ambulances. Now let's go back to the studio, but before we do, a little bit about the hoax Triple O calls. Now, Triple O get a, a triage of hoax Triple O calls and they can be very annoying from an ingrown toenail to a pizza delivery or a taxi service. Nah, nah, you don't ring Triple O for that or if you block the, the keys in your car or anything like that. So please don't be stupid with triple zero, only dial triple zero in an emergency and don't tell them that you've got a cold. Now, here's my offsider to take up this story. So yes, call triple zero if it is an emergency. Um, make sure you call only on emergency and not if you have a little problem to solve that you might solve yourself so triple zero is for emergencies only so 
you might take away an ambulance away from you know a serious illness or patient or you could put someone like me or my offsider in there in the key of she is to tell you about leaving that number alone yeah so the people who are working for triple zero are professionals who uh, will guide you through your emergency but if it's not an emergency you might just need um, to call someone else or someone to help you um, but make sure you just follow the instruction of the triple zero um, customer service if it's not an emergency you might need to call someone else or call the police directly on one three one triple four now let's go back to the studio and see what's happening there well here we are back in our in time building and now it's time for a, 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 a morning tea break and we'll come back with the second part of our show later on.